G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Thursday evening here in Australia and the market has bounced back hard, 5%, which is quite nice, but we're still under $2 trillion, so we haven't quite made it back to that $2 trillion. So at the moment there's tons of stuff out there, you know, oh this is super bullish for crypto, like all the thumbnails that you'll see on YouTube and a lot of the people on Twitter are all going, you know, this is super bullish news. That hasn't actually been confirmed yet. I don't want you to get too far ahead of yourself. It's great that we've had this bounce back, but once we get to the charts, I'll show you what I mean. But look, for now, things are great, but we're under $2 trillion, and that is something that concerns me at the moment. I think we need to be over there before I get really kind of too bullish. At the moment, I'm not bearish, but I'm not bullish. I'm just on the sidelines at the moment. I'm unsure. All right, BTC dominance dropped just a little bit. Not too much, still above 41%. Uh, volume uh, is down. A lot of people have already came in. Bitcoin price almost back at $44,000, which is nice. But we need to remember we were at 48000 and 52000 not that long ago. So hence why I'm not sold that this is super bullish news just yet. Gas prices are down considering where they were. They're up around $5, $7, uh, but still not cheap overall. All right. I see a green at the moment, so that's great. And again, I'll take any kind of gain, but we need to remember a lot of these coins, excuse me, they're down from where they were not too long ago. So, all right, what's done the best then in the last 24 hours? In the top 100. Oh, Arweave, 27%. Adam, 22%. Luna, 22%. Avax, nearly 20%. E-Gold. 15.5%. Tezos, Axie Infinity making a nice move. IOST, Solana back to $148. And look, tons of great double digit gains. So that's amazing. What about losses though in the top 100? Considering we're up 5%, I'm going to say there probably won't be too many, but there's always, well, not always, but I'm going to say 99% of the time, there's an outlier that hasn't done well. So <laughs> the only things that aren't doing well at the moment are basically uh, dollar pegged coins. So, uh, I, well, no, sorry, Leo, there we go. There's the one token I can find in the losses that isn't dollar pegged. The rest of them are all dollar pegged. So there's our one outlier. And then after that, it's basically all green. So it is looking great in those regards. But let's go to the Bitcoin chart because here's what worries me. Again, like I said, really, if Bitcoin you know, goes below 28,000, you'd have to say, like, we are definitely in a bear market. I would start to get worried at about 38,000. Again, not a wick, something that wicks down there, I'm not too worried about. But here's what I want us to remember. This was our old, old all-time high. We set in a lower high. We set in a lower high. And then we set in uh, our new low. Now we come back and retested this and it was resistance. We dipped down. Now it's not all bad news. We've got above this old resistance and we have used it as support over here, support over here, almost there. And now we dipped down for two days, but we have come back above. So that's the good news. But the, and again, it's not bad news because I'm not going to give you a, a, you know, a bad news at the moment because I don't think things are bad, but this is what concerns me. That was our high, this is our high, this could be our high, this still could be going lower. I'm not going to be what I would consider bullish until first of all we got to get back above 48,000. If we can't do that, then I am actually bearish. If we set in another lower high and go down, this is this repeating and then this is going to repeat and I get the feeling like we are in a bear market. Again, I'm really looking for us to go under that $38,000 level and not looking as in a good way, I don't want that to happen, but if we go under 38,000 and we're constantly setting in lower highs, that for me says that we are in a bear market. Now again, I never offer you financial advice, I'm just giving you my personal opinion and that's, you know, I've been in the space a little while, so I like to think I know a thing or two, but don't take what I say as gospel or the exact truth. You've got to make your own decisions and work out. But that's what I'm looking for. So this is great. We had this good bounce back. And maybe this was, again, you know, if you follow TA and you have a breakout from a point, which was here, a lot of the time they say they want you to come back and retest it. Didn't quite retest it there. We were close. 
Didn't quite retest it there. Didn't quite retest it there. Almost. Bang. We sort of retested it, but fell through, but almost immediately jumped back out. So that you know, can be considered a good thing. Breakout point, we came back down, tested it, and it doesn't have to be pinpoint perfect exact. It doesn't have to be down to the cent or the satoshi or anything like that. This is still basically what you'd call a retest. If this now starts to break through these levels, this is what we call a good retest, and that is bullish. So I don't want to give you all the bad news, but first, we need to get through basically 48,500. And even if we get through 48,500, I won't consider this a bullish move until we break through $52,500. And again, not just a little bit. We can easily come back, have a sort of wick that goes up, and if this simply starts to roll over again, then again, this is basically this playing out. And this might play out a few times, and we may have to come way down lower and lower and lower. I don't think that's what's going to happen. It's just something I have in the back of my mind. Until I see us break, like I said, 42 and a half basically, and then 52 and a half, I'm not considering this bullish. I'm considering this in between. But there are good elements to it. Again, this was the breakout point. We broke through this old resistance here. We got rejected from it, so it looked a little bit worrying, came back down, stayed in this channel, breached above it, awesome. And you could maybe say that was kind of the retest, but it wasn't really a retest. It just bounced off it. This is what we could call the retest. Even though I break through it, it only lasted basically sort of 24 hours, and now we're back above it. But we definitely have some interesting sort of days and weeks ahead of us. Because again, I really am looking for these marks. If we can't get through 48,000, and particularly 52, this is really kind of the main key for me. If we can get above 52,500 and a legitimate close, and then maybe a couple of closes, and then maybe have something like this happen again, we come up and maybe get somewhere near 64, or at least up here, come over, come back, retest 52,500, and then start to move up. Then again, I am really bullish, but it doesn't have to come back and retest it. It's just if it falls over for whatever reason and come back and retest this and then starts to make more moves upwards, that is what they consider bullish uh, sort of momentum uh, in the TA space. So they're the things I'm looking for. Again, don't, you know, be careful. I'm not telling you don't, you gotta make your own mind up. But just be careful getting too far ahead of yourself at the moment. You know, again, as soon as it sort of bounced, everyone was, you know, you can see some of these things from, you know, one day they're super bullish and then the next it's bearish. And, you know, look, just be careful. <laughs> be careful. We're not out of the woods yet. We have some levels that are going to be really, really important to get through before we can kind of jump on the bullish. Because, again, that's the ultimate high, lower high, and lots of lower highs here. We broke back above but that high is still lower, that high is still lower, and this is sort of our new high at the moment, at least in the last three days, and that's lower than all three of these. So that is not a bullish pattern at the moment. We are setting in lower highs. What we need to be, able, what we need to be doing is setting in higher lows, and we have done that. That low uh, was you know, more than these, so that was our ultimate low though, really, for a candle close. We set in a new low, which is good, we set in a new low, which is good, and we set in a new low. But the problem is now we've broken that, and our lows are getting lower. Our highs are getting lower, and our lows are getting lower. So that is actually troubling me at the moment. Again, I don't think we're bearish at the moment, but I don't think we're bullish at the moment. I did until this all happened, and we're setting in lower highs. So I am somewhat skeptical at the moment. All right, moving on. A couple of stories I want to have a look at. <sighs> More hacks. So Bitcoin Org hacked, and there's a giveaway scam, and it's promising users to double their BTC. If you're watching my channel, hopefully you've been around long enough and you understand that nothing that says they're going to double your money in any sort of specifically short period of time, like, you know, give me this much, and I promise you in, you know, 24 hours, 48 hours, or even a month or two, I'll double your money. That's a scam. 100% that is a scam. It is lucky for someone to double their money quickly. It really is. It's lucky. Even the altcoins are hard up to double your money 
uh, in sort of 24 hours. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but it's hard and it's usually really low cap stuff. It's not the big cap stuff. You're not going to see Bitcoin double in 24 hours. You're not going to see Ethereum double in 24 hours unless they are in a parabolic sort of stage where everything's just pumping. That's when it can happen. And that's usually the indication, hey, I should probably take some profits here and probably shouldn't be throwing money in because it's just gotten crazy. So if you see any kind of scams, it doesn't matter what it is, and they're promising to double your money or triple your money, specifically if they're saying, hey, you send me this and I'm going to send you back double or three times as much, it is a scam. You know, if someone's saying they could double your money in a year, I would still be skeptical of that. Really, as soon as someone promises any kind of specific returns, like I'm going to double your money, uh, run for the hills. Now, not something that says they can give you 4% or 8% uh, over a year. That still could be scammy, but we know that that's actually true. That's something that can happen in the crypto world. That's not unheard of. I'd still be careful with it, but that stuff I wouldn't be so scared of. But something that says that, you know, anything, again, that's doubling, tripling, or, you know, whatever it is, and specifically you got to send them something first, uh, yeah, run for the hills. And it's unfortunate that Bitcoin uh, org got hacked, but they have said they th they're they blaming it on Cloudflare. Cloud Sorry, so it says down here, Bitcoin.org hasn't been hacked ever until today. And then we move to Cloudflare, and two months later we get hacked. Can you explain where you were routing my traffic to? Because my actual server didn't get any traffic during the hack. So that is a bit of a worry, and these are the things that go on in the crypto space, and hence why you need to be very careful. Uh, it is still uh, a dangerous space. But look, the good thing is, a lot of the time hackers are getting caught out these days, like a majority of them are. Very few hackers are getting away with that. That's not to say there's none, because there are some hackers that are getting away with it. They're a little bit clever than the rest, but most of the hackers, they're getting caught. It's actually hard to, you know, really scam people out of stuff long term. You can do it short term, not so hard. But the problem is then kind of, you know, trying to, what they have to do, wash trader. They've got to run it through programs and all the rest of it. And even then, they're generally getting caught and exchanges are getting onto them and all sorts of stuff. But hence why, be careful in crypto. You know, the returns are great, the losses are awful, and they're even worse when your losses are permanent uh, and, you know, you can't get them back through scams. They really hurt. So please be careful. Now, some bullish news, though. Again, I don't want to make you think it's all bearish. There's still bullish news as well. Have a look at some of these headings. Infrastructure provider Block Demon raises $155 million with participation from Goldman Sachs. But that's big institutional investors and thing, and they just raised $155 million. Solana Power DeFi platform Orca raises $18 million, and the AMM commands over $300 million in total value locked. Genesis Digital Assets reveals $431 million capital raise. There is still big money pouring into this space. So again, hence why there's plenty of bullish news out there. It's just the charts aren't looking bullish at the moment. Now that can change very, very quickly. But at the moment, the, chance, the charts aren't looking bullish. But that's hence why I don't follow TA solely. I don't follow, follow uh, sentiment solely. It's a combination of all factors that helps me make my decision about where our things are. TA is right until it's not. Social sentiment is right until it's not. This is worrying. Almost half of crypto owners turn to celebs like Kim Kardashian for advice. Now some of the celebrities and you know influencers and things like that, they can be right. But the same as TA, the same as sentiment, they can be right until they're not. Be very careful getting all your information and making all your decisions based on somebody else's opinion. You really need to come in and make your own decisions. Now, if you're very new to the space, it's really hard. And hence why I always say it's just a whole lot easier being an investor. Do a little bit of homework about what projects have been around for a while and are doing good things. They've got some history behind them, i.e. Bitcoin really. Put some into it and just sit on it for five or ten years and see what it does. Not so much that it breaks the bank if it goes to zero. I don't think it's going to zero, but it could. But this is concerning that half, nearly half, it was 45%, but if people are looking to celebrities and influencers to get their crypto advice, 
take it with a pinch of salt. Now, there are some really good investors out there. They don't give a whole lot of crypto advice, but, but celebrity-wise, I think of Jay-Z. He's been in crypto for a while. I don't know if he gives out much crypto advice, but if he's into a project, that's something I'd probably have a look at because he's made some really good decisions in crypto over the years. Nas, another one. You know, two rappers have made some... You know, he's made some really good uh, money out of crypto and some decisions in crypto. Like, I saw that him, Katy Perry, and Jason Derulo got invested in Audius, and that was great because I was in Audius ages ago. So the fact that Nas is getting in gave me a little bit of confidence. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't follow Nas on Twitter and I don't follow uh, Jay-Z on Twitter. I like both of them. I've, I love their music. I've got their albums and all the rest of it. If they were to tweet something out, that doesn't mean I just jump at it straight away and go, this has got to be the best thing ever and it's going to the moon. No, they've made mistakes as well. Everybody's made mistakes. I've made mistakes. You know, you name it, some of the biggest influencers on here have made mistakes. The best, brightest, uh, you know, TA analysts and you know you name it investors have made mistakes we all make mistakes there's no one place that's going to give you all the right information so if you're watching my story please do your own research and you don't have to investigate things to the nth degree but just understand what you've invested in be able to look at charts get a bit of a feel for sort of how they work again you don't need to be a TA analyst but you can generally look at them and work out something that's been going up you know over hopefully years as opposed to just the last few months that's all the history it's got that would be a bit of a worry once you can understand that then you hopefully can pick up on sentiment what's happening in the world are things on the up in the world or are they looking bad and on the way down Again, that doesn't just simply give you your information there right there. Things can still go up in bad economies. There's, there, there's always outliers. But generally, if everything's looking bad, things are probably going down and it may not be the best time to invest and you should wait until there's a little bit of positivity. But again, I never offer you financial advice. You can still invest slowly into a market that's going down, but just make sure you got you know a bit of cash sitting on the side. Like I said yesterday, some kind of 60-40, 40-60 split. You know, if you want to get into crypto and the market's going down and you don't know when it's going to be at the very bottom, put in 40% uh, of whatever you can invest on a weekly, monthly, yearly basis, whatever it is, and have the other 60% sitting you know, in some stable coins or cash or whatever you want to do until you feel like things have changed. There are ways that will help you get ahead. But please, and, and same with me, if I you know, say I like something and I think it's going to do real well, don't take that as, you know, the be all and end all that it's a good project i've made mistakes i've made mistakes this year i've got into coins that have just done nothing and gone anywhere and had to get rid of them i'm not going to name and shame any or anything like that they don't deserve that none of none of the ones i've been invested in have gone bust or anything but i've definitely got in some and they just did nothing and went nowhere and nothing's happening with them it is what it is all right last but not least though Ripple to pilot Bhutan's CBDC using private ledger. So Ripple, they are expanding, even with all this SEC regulation stuff, you know, the court case going on, they're not done. Things are still looking up for Ripple. That doesn't mean it can't all turn bad. And again, a lot of people are now sold that Ripple's going to win or they're going to settle and it's all going to be over. Nobody, well, there may be some people that know that, but geez, I, I wouldn't bet the house on it. I've definitely bet some money on Ripple, don't get me wrong. I've got a position, but I'm not betting the house on it. There is still a very real chance that they lose and get absolutely crushed. Even though there's information out there and everyone's saying, no, nope, it's already decided and it's this and that. Well, I hope they really do have really good inf side information. And I hope they're right because, again, I have a position in Ripple. But I haven't bet the house on it because if it's wrong... I don't want to be the one having basically everything in Ripple and getting burnt. All good to those who are all in Ripple and it turns out to be great, then they can sit back and laugh. Uh, and I'll shake their hand and say, congratulations, I love your determination and your, your belief. I've got belief that Ripple are going to win as well. But again, I just can't bet the house on it. I, I, I'm not into you know taking that big a gamble. You're already gambling if you're here in, again, not gambling, gambling, but you're taking a gamble being in cryptocurrency considering how new a space it is and everything that's going on, not just in the world economically, but also that's going on, you know, with regulation and that. 
So if you're coming to here, why again would you just pick one sol, you know, solo coin to put all your money in really outside of Bitcoin? And again, I still don't recommend that. But if I was going to do it with any cryptocurrency, just go one in all in, it would be Bitcoin because it's already been deemed not a security. Then no one's looking to ban Bitcoin. There's definitely uh, governments that don't want it to be legal tender, but there's very few uh, governments looking to ban Bitcoin. They are planning to use Bitcoin and uh, offer it up as a legitimate uh, investment opportunity. It just can't be, uh, the same can't be said about all the other cryptocurrencies. Ethereum is the only other one. I think they're the only two that have been given the clearance that they are not securities. Everything else is still in the crosshairs of the SEC and governments around the world. We need to remember that. But we'll just go down here. So the Royal Monetary Authority or the RMA will use Ripple's CBDC private ledger to run retail, cross-border and wholesale pay payment pilot tests of a digital version of the, I'm going to butcher this and I apologize, of the Ngultrum, Bhutan's national currency. The pilot will be built atop the country's payment, uh, current payment infrastructure and will be uh, conducted in phases. So again, there's plenty of bullish news out there, but unfortunately, the TA is not looking bullish at the moment. If this is a true bounce, and it is, this is the retest, and it goes through 48 and 52, then we can look back in hindsight and say this is bullish. But at the moment, if we can't set in a high definitely above 48,000, but we still need to get through 52,000, then this is actually bearish. This is a dead cat bounce going lower. And where the bottom will be, who knows? Again, I'm not expecting that. I'm just not counting it out because the TA doesn't look that good just yet. All right, you know my opinion, that's where I'm at. Again, I'm not bearish, I'm just not bullish at the moment either. I'm waiting to see what happens because there's bullish news, but there's a bearish uh, pattern forming on the charts at the moment. Well, yet to be undetermined if it's bearish, but in the short term, it's looking bearish. All right, that's it. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Everyone should be on that game train, at least in the short term, and I'll see you next time.